Hello everyone, this is very tired. Welcome to the milk bar. <sighs> yes, very very tired today it was a rough day at work, so but I'm I'm gonna get through this. I'm yeah, I'm recording on a work day because it's just a milk bar. And the reason I'm recording this milk bar is to make sure that the next milk bar will not be too long. Because the next milk bar is coming pretty soon, because we're getting close to my 3,000th video. So that, as I did with 1,000th and 2,000th... Ooh, words. Um, I did... Uh, like special montages of things I'd done up to that point and it's gonna be the same this time and that takes up a huge chunk of time and I've also got other things to talk about then. The thing is I've got some questions that I need to answer and if I would do both the big montage and all of these questions that video would take forever. So this is more of a let's answer some questions milk bar and uh, one other thing. So just to make sure this episode is not too long either, because I've got three questions all from the same person, let's just get to it. Questions? Uh, some, so the questions are all from my very loyal viewer, uh, Grafspe, and some numbers at the end there. And I don't even know if I'm pronouncing it correctly, I'm just see, saying it as I see it. Oh, excuse me, and... Uh, some of the questions are quite long and I'm gonna I'm gonna do them in order as I got them. So the first question is uh, what things are there to do in my hometown or like area like parks, music festivals, hiking, fishing, museums, boating etc and what things do you like to do to chill out that don't involve video games? So for the first part there I'm really the wrong person to ask because I, I mainly just stay at home. <laughs> Even like on my days off and on vacation and stuff, I tend to just stay home and play video games and do other things and do YouTube. I don't go out and do things a lot. So yeah, my hometown is Göteborg, Gothenburg in English. I don't know why we have an English name. We don't have an English name for Stockholm. It's Stockholm in Swedish. Pronunciation is different, but it's the same name. Is it because of the ö? Perhaps I don't. Know, but it's stupid. I, I like to call it Göteborg. Uh, so parks, yes we do. We Our biggest park is called Slottskogen. I've done videos there uh, many years ago. I went there and I filmed a lot. It, it, it's um, Vixelink's Adventure 1, the first series uh, took place there. And it's divided into like a mountainous area with a lot of forest and a lot of the animals are kept there, and then you have the park area, which is a little bit lower. Uh, and there are other places as well, like smaller parks, but that's the big one. Uh, music festivals, that's the like worst, really worst question to ask me, because I don't... I don't like that kind of thing, it's just loud and a lot of people and stuff. Yeah, I don't know much about that, but I do know one, because it's so big and famous, I guess, at least it is here in Sweden, at the very least in Göteborg. And it's one that actually takes place in Slottskogen, in the park area, every year. I think it's usually in August. Um, I've never been there, I just heard of it a lot. And it's called Way Out West. And the, the thing that bothers me about that is whenever you see it in uh, things about it in a newspaper or you read about it elsewhere, they tend to shorten it to W-O-W, WOW, for Way Out West. But for me, that's World of Warcraft, so <laughs> I, I, I see something that it says WOW, and I'm like, oh, it's about... No, it's not about WOW. <laughs> ah, so that's a bit annoying. Uh, let's see, hiking. Yeah, there are plenty of places, like, you can go anywhere and hike. Uh, we have one area that lies very close, like almost in the city, called Engorgebergen, uh, which translates to. Well, I can't really translate gourd, but 
meadow farm mountains. Not really correct, but yeah. It's like a mountainous forest area that lies very, like... Very central in, in the city. The city is a bit spread out. Um, but the thing is, compared to many other countries, we have this thing in Sweden, Sweden called Allemansrätten. And that is it's basically a law that makes it so that, well, it doesn't matter who owns like a forest or like a place, you can go anywhere you like. As long as you don't break stuff or many, yeah, there, there's a lot of details. But yeah, I, I know like for a fact in many places in America, you're not allowed to go to certain places out in the wild because it's owned property by people so you don't you're just not allowed to be there and there are certain like places you can be or something i'm not completely into that but in sweden you can go pretty much anywhere you, you can't go on someone's like uh, lawn but you can go in the forest anywhere you like it's every everyone can go everywhere so you can hike everywhere fishing well yeah yotobori is by the ocean so if you have the equipment you can just go and fish by the ocean it's very easy and uh, it, however if you want to fish in a lake or a, or a river you need to get permission you need to get a fishing card fiskekort in swedish i don't know if it's called f fishing card in english uh, i don't know exactly why i've never done it myself but i just know that you need to do that Museums, we have a lot of museums. Um, I don't really go to museums that much either. We have the Museum of Natural History, which happens to lie on the outskirts of Slottskogen. Uh, a lot of taxidermied animals and other things. That's kind of cool. I remember that from being a kid. Uh, the Seafaring Museum, which is currently under big renovations. Um, used to go there a lot of, with my dad as a kid as well. And they have like a lot of sea history since we're a sea ta seaside town. Uh, so there are a lot of things about ships and stuff. And then in the basement they have an aquarium, like a big aquarium. And that's the part they're renovating and building out. There's they are going to have a huge aquarium section. And then there are next to... It was, I think, my l latest... No, 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 not my latest... Well... Whatever, I went to Universium and, and shot some videos. And next to that place is another museum. I've never been there. I, it's just... I just know that it's the World Culture Museum. So it's like a cultural museum. And there are many, many others. I don't really know much more than those. Um, and boating, etc. So boating depends on what you mean by boating, really. If you mean going out with your own boat, like my family, we own a boat, a sailing boat. And we, in the summer, we can go out with that when we want to in the archipelago. Uh, archipelago? Archipelago? Ugh, whatever. And yeah, a lot of people do own boats. I, I think Sweden is the country in the world where per capita... Per capita, we own the most amount of, like, private boats. I think it's something like that. So that that's one thing. If you mean... Uh, you can rent a kayak in many places. I don't know where exactly, but that's something you can do. I've never done so. Uh, if you want to go out to the... If you don't own a boat and you want to go out to the archipelago, there are ferries you can take. To take you there. And last but not least, we have uh, a thing I've never done, which is kind of weird since I lived here all my life. Uh, but it's a bit of a touristy thing and it's kind of weird to do touristy things in your own city. Uh, but we have something called paddan, båtarna. The, the, pad, uh, the, the towed boats, I guess, is a good uh, translation. And they are these kind of almost square, very flat boats that go in the canal in, uh, of our city and you usually have a guided tour with a guide with a microphone like talking about things and showing things as you go through the city 
the part of the city that's in next to the canal, I guess. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much all the answers to that question. We're already 10 minutes in and we're not even through the first question completely yet. So what do I like to do to chill out that don't involve video games? Well, I like to read. I do like to read and it's like mainly fantasy. You've seen it before, you can't see it right now, but you've seen it before when, where I lived before. I always, when I was playing console games, I had my bookshelf in the background. Now it's in my bedroom, so you can't see it from here, but it's just filled with fantasy books and I keep buying more because I love fantasy. It's, it's the most fun to read to me. And I reread my books a lot as well. Uh, other things, I, I do sometimes like to draw but I don't do it very often. I just don't have the time. Uh, this does not involve video games, me recording videos. Uh, so any non-Let's Play videos are also kind of fun, I guess. Uh, watching movies, watching series, watching YouTube. Uh, what else do I like to do? Play board games a little bit. I do like to hang out with friends, but I don't do it very often. It's only like a couple of times a year. It's hard to find the time. And also no one actually contacts me. It's always it's always me that has to contact and we always have fun. But no one ever contacts me. So yeah, that's there, there are probably a couple more things, but that's basically it. So on to the, your second question that came a bit later. So what are my thoughts on YouTube Shorts? Uh, how well does the format work with my type and style of content? Do I have to go out of my way to do them? And what kind of non-playthrough slash video game content would you think about making for them? And will I spend more time and energy making some? So my thoughts on Shorts are, they're great. Like, I don't really watch that many shorts myself, but for my channel, they're very good because they are marketed in a vastly different way than normal videos. So I get, sometimes I'm very lucky and I upload a short and within a few days, it's got over a thousand views. Sometimes, like the latest one, which is uh, the latest one for me, it's probably like one or two more for you guys. It was the Ocarina of Time one with the uh, Kukos when I did, it, it was a mistake. So far it only has 14 views, which is probably the lowest I've ever gotten on one of my shorts. I don't know, like, is it in the naming? It's the timing of the upload? I don't know what makes them get extra views, but yeah, it, it has really helped me a lot with exposure and extra views, extra view times. So it, it is very, very helpful. Um, so the f how well does the format work with my type and style of content? I mean, mostly I've been taking little funny clips from Let's Play stuffs and just cut out that little bit and made that a video. Or I've taken entire videos that has been under a minute, like random old skits and one a cappella I tried, didn't do very well. And it just upload them as is. So it, it does work. Um, do I have to go out of my way to do them? Yeah, a little bit. Um, doesn't take very long. The thing, that, the part that takes the longest is to remember, like, hmm, what, what thing from a video can I take and make, uh, like, a short out of? Uh, I do have a few ideas at the moment, but I don't want to do more than one a week. What kind of non-playthrough slash video game content would you think about making for these? And will you spend more time and energy making some? So I, I assume by that you mean like original short contents, not take my old stuff and make shorts out of it. Like, I have a lot of skit ideas that I have written down, and some of them might fit for doing for YouTube shorts, uh, because they are just minor things, so those I might do in the future. Uh, so will I be spending more time and energy making them? Very possible, very possible. Not right now? But may happen in the future. That question was a lot quicker to answer, answer, I feel like. If you have any follow-up questions to that one, in case I missed something, just let me know. 
And the last question, I didn't write it down because I ran out of room, so I have to actually go to the video where the question was asked. And move over here, there, and here we go. Let's see, I don't remember this one. Um, so, last question. I would assume that doing video commentary, a person would have to be pretty decent at just talking to themselves at first and then talking like there are other people present. And I'm sure that it is something that you must do and not think about kind of like when uh, I coach kids in baseball, they must hit a catch, a ball, and I don't and don't think about it. I'm just <laughs> in my brain. Sorry, I'm tired. <laughs> I know you have worked on your commentary, which I think is fine. Thank you. Uh, what things have you done to improve or just get comfortable doing it and what would you like to change or work on for the future? Uh, yeah, well, the way I have done to work to improve my commentary and get comfortable is just to do it for almost 10 years. I've yet, it, it just, if you go back, I've said this a thousand times, but if you go back and watch like my first Let's Play Bit 5, I am so uncomfortable. I remember uh, then I did a recording session of one video at a time back in the beginning. A little bit later I started doing two. Afterwards, like my whole lower back was covered in sweat and always when recording I felt so awkward. Now I'm just like oh, relaxed. It's because I'm so used to it. So it, it, it just comes with practice and yeah pretty decent to talking to myself. Yeah, I've basically always been able to, at least in my head, not out loud where, where people can hear me, but in my head at the very least, I, I made a, um, a a conversation video about this topic back in the day. Back in the day? No, a couple of years ago. That's called like talking to myself. I do like to talk to myself. I'm talking to myself right now. It's just me and a camera. There's nothing else here. I'm making a video, so... <laughs> and it really just takes a lot of time. I would say that that's, that's how it worked for me. And what would you like to change or work on for the future? Well, I've been trying ever since I started doing it when I was Let's Playing Majora's Mask. I want to get better at improv. Uh, to be able to just... N just stop censoring myself, because sometimes I can censor my thoughts a bit, uh, or like my words more than my thoughts. I, the thoughts are uncensored, but then what comes out, that can be a bit censored because my brain is blocking me. It's like, no, don't say that. That's not funny. Like that type, that type of um, censorship. Uh, and I mentioned it before. It probably would be easier if I was doing this. Oh, I forgot my milk completely. This is the milk bar, goddammit. <sighs> if I was doing this with someone else, because then you can, uh, like, say random things and have them react to it and maybe laugh. I do have a couple of videos where I'm playing with friends and stuff. The thing is, they are not, none of them are doing YouTube, so they are not used to it. And I'm not used to playing with other people, so you have, you would have to also there record a lot together to then get comfortable with it, I, I guess. But yeah, really, yeah, better at, uh, I want to get better at uh, improv and I want to stop censoring myself. I just want to be more randomly out there with things, just be able to say whatever I want, and the only things I would cut out would be, well, if I accidentally said something really bad, uh, which I don't tend to do. I, like, if you follow my channel, I do swear sometimes, but not a lot. It doesn't come to me as naturally. I need to be, like, really angry or something. And that's it. So thank you so much for those questions. Now we're only t over 20 minutes long video you see why i wanted to make a separate milk bar uh, episode instead of waiting until the 3000th with the montage on top of this 
But the thing is, we have one more thing I want to do. One more thing. Because I thought like, oh yeah, we have the three questions quite long, especially the first one. Uh, but one thing I haven't done for a while is the random section. Random. Of my milk bar videos. I haven't done it in years, actually. And I actually got an idea. It's another taste test, which I've done before with a couple of things. Uh, but yeah, it was years ago. And it is right here. It is a donut. Because as far as I can remember, I think I've tasted a donut once in my life when I was maybe 12? And the only thing I remember is I didn't really like it. I thought it was way too sweet, like almost sickly sweet. So I've never really eaten any since. Um, but they have them at the um, fairly newly built grocery store that I go to. And so yeah, it's not really a very, very Swedish thing. Like you, you see them a lot. In content about America, if that makes any sense, and it's like a common thing. I, I mean, it's more Swedish to go with a cinnamon bun. That's that's a very Swedish thing. This feels more like an American thing. And I, I am expecting it to be very sweet, and I'm not expecting to really like it. I'm, I'm expecting, I, I, I'm not expecting to dislike it. Just, I don't think, I think it will just be a bit too sweet for me. I'm a more of a salt guy. I like. I like chips and salt and stuff. So let's let's try this. Mm -hmm. And this specifically was a strawberry one. I don't know if that means that there's strawberry jam in it or something. But there were a couple of different. Oh, it's so light. It's weird. So let's get close and. I mean, it's okay. It's a bit... There was nothing in it, it's just bread. So I guess it's just the topping that's... Um, strawberry, the pink frosting stuff. With some sprinkles on it. Okay, I would say... Yeah, it is a bit too sweet for my taste. Like... Because the entire bread is sweet in itself. But it feels like the consistency is that of normal bread, not of um, like a pastry. So it's like normal bread, but it's very, very sweet. Um, it's okay. It's not something I would buy regularly, but I'm, I'm gonna finish this later. I'm not gonna eat all of this now in the video. Um, Let's have one more bite here. Oh. Well, it's fine, but... Yeah, as I said, it's not like it's something I'm gonna keep buying. It's... It's, it's alright, but it's not my thing. It was... It reminds me a bit of... Uh, when I was in school. Um, from when I was 12 to 15, I took French which I barely remember anything from. And our teacher would like bring us sometimes, or maybe we just twice or something like that, like French snacks to try. So it's not like only language stuff, but also a little bit culture stuff that we learned. And they have very many like similar things to this, like pain du chocolat. We tried that. It's like sweet, sweet bread with a stick of chocolate inside of it. Like, yeah, I can eat it, but it's just so goddamn sweet. It's like way too sweet for me. So, so it, it's it's all right, but a bit too sweet for my taste. But it's all right. But yeah, that's gonna be it for this milk bar. Over 25 minutes long. I do have minor things to cut out, but not much. So it's gonna be about 25 minutes, I guess. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for watching this. And look forward to the next Milk Bar, which will be my 3000th video, coming quite soon. 
So, thanks so much for watching. Yeah, things. Bye. Boom. Yeah. Boom. Boom. Yeah. Watch a video. Boom. Boom.